It's just such a special place. The first time we came on it, we said this is a place that really should be saved and be preserved because Macon's so close by, we're only about eight minutes from downtown Macon here and surrounded by subdivisions. Uh, welcome again to uh, Buckaloo Farms. I'm Jim Adams. And I'm Jane Adams. And we're sitting here at the classroom area in the, in the barns for Buckaloo Farms. Uh, this farm, we purchased it in December of 2013, if I remember correctly. Does that sound right, dear? It does. And uh, so we acquired the farm. It was put into a conservation easement, a perpetual conservation easement, with a timber management program and a wildlife management program. And we have Lynn Hooven as our forester, who uh, has been very instrumental in managing the timber program. We have approximately 1,500 acres here. And we have, I think if I recall correctly, we have nine different rooms uh, for our program that we manage. Uh, by that I mean we have different rooms that we burn, that we do thinning on, and our timber management program prescribes all of this as to when it would be done and, and how it should be done. I think the things that mean the most to me is the wildlife, getting up in the morning and sitting out on the porch and seeing the deer come up to the feeders. Uh, we have feeders set right around the house so that when the children come, we have grandchildren that, uh, that love to come, they can see the deer in the early morning. And uh, we have rabbits that come up, all kinds of birds. Uh, that's very special. So one of the nice things in the morning is sitting out on the back porch and having your morning coffee and listening to the quail calling to each other. And of course, my wife's hearing is much better than mine these days, and so she gets to hear the turkeys in the morning when they gobble during the springtime. And... Except during hunting season, and you don't hear a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably one of the few people in life that has a 1,500-acre office, you know, and I always tell people, you know, a, a uh, bad day in the forest, which I'm not sure I've seen one, is better than a good day in the city. Here, when you have 1,500 acres, uh, we decided not to have um, just all timber, all one age and everything. We want diversity. Diversity when it comes to wildlife, diversity when it comes to aesthetics. And so instead of dividing this in the timber types up here, we divide it into different compartments. Each compartment has water, each compartment has cover for wildlife, and each compartment has food for the wildlife. So what we've noticed on the trail cameras, you will find uh, deer and turkey kind of hanging out in a, in a, in a certain area have everything they need there, you know, especially water. That's what we look at. So even though we have maybe two or three compartments that are exactly the same age, what we try to do is try to get rid of that row look, if you will. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with the crop because all crops are planted in rows. And I always kid everybody when they say they don't like uh, rows and planted pine. You show me any two trees, I show them they're in a row. What we have done, and consequently, is we have set up a thinning regime ever since 2003 where we thin from within or from one under uh, one block a year. Instead of doing it all and have it exactly like, you go across the farm now and you will see, you can't really tell in some cases that it's a planted stand. Mm -hmm. It has a lot, a lot of diversity and it takes on its own character, if you will. And another thing that we're really big on here is the management of your roads. Uh, with turnouts and SMZs because your SMZs are the filter strips. Uh, this is rolling terrain up here. It's not like South Georgia, flat as a pancake, which has its assets, but up here it has its uh, trials and tribulations of managing that. But we maintain uh, filter strips around all the creeks, even though they're not blue line streams, they may be intermittent, and that's very, very important is to get that filtration into your lake. Because if you've seen the lake over there, Obviously, your lake and your streams are going to be in the lower part of the, of the property. All the streams feed to that. So that's, that's an important characteristic is managing your, your water out there. Our farm, tree farm, is all about uh, woods, wildlife, uh, education, recreation. recreation. 
we're going to have uh, the uh, Billy Lancaster uh, boys group today, which they learn about forestry. We just completed the program with the uh, teachers conservation workshop where we had, what do we have, Jane, about 45 teachers? About 45. Mm -hmm. And uh, they all learned about forestry and we're, we're very pleased and we think part of uh, owning a farm like this is good stewardship not only protecting the conservation easement but educating people about uh, how important timber is to Georgia and timber program is to the southeast we're in the epicenter of some of the best uh, timber growing areas in the world uh, one of the things we like to show people as well is that you can grow timber and have it aesthetically a pleasing bolt. They're not mutually exclusive, you know, and they're, they're both dependent on the forest. So, you know, we might gripe about following a log truck down the road, but when you look at what the uh, forest industry and those tree farm people, what they really contribute to the economy is really tremendous. So uh, I'm happy to be a part of it. Uh, you've met Jane and Jim Adams, and that uh, I can't think of a, a, a better place to be uh, than out here uh, as much or as little as I want. This is from both of us. We really believe in conservation. We think that uh, tree farming is an integral part of Georgia, and we've got to preserve and make it more economically viable every chance we get for tree farms to survive. Otherwise, those properties close into communities that are growing out are just going to become another subdivision and I don't think that's what any of us want to see and people in the timber industry it's too vital an asset to uh, have it all taken away our water quality for the state is dependent upon tree farms like this and other forested areas to uh, help screen and uh, purify the water uh, take all of the runoff out uh, we just feel that this is all very important and hope that you join us in this and will join us in preserving tree farms and protecting our water, our, our timber, our wildlife, and educate other people about tree farms. My name is Philip Exley. I'm the state chairman of the Georgia Tree Farm Program. Uh, currently in the state of Georgia, we've got a little over 1,200 certified tree farms totaling 1.22 million acres. Uh, the benefits of uh, tree farming to landowners is an opportunity to network with others. Uh, we've got over 150 active inspectors in the state, so we're a resource that they can turn to uh, for best management practices or for ideas that are looking to, uh, to practice some, some different management ideas on their land. Um, certification has, has gotten very big in Georgia. Uh, a lot of markets are coming to Georgia to seek that certified wood. So, uh, we're looking to continue to grow that program. Uh, Buckaloo is a perfect example, and it's a representative of the 1,200 plus certified tree farms we got through the numerous activities they hold out here, the advocacy they show, uh, the sustainable forestry, the best management practices. So we're very proud to uh, have Buckaloo as the 2016 uh, Georgia Tree Farmer of the Year.